Hello and welcome to the Lillian McMorris Show. I am Lillian McMorris and I certainly do appreciate you joining us. We've had an absolutely wonderful abundance of people are saying we are happy to find out what's going on in our community. We also want to make a special thank you to Jimmy J and City Lights. Our next four shows, maybe five, are going to be taped right here at City Lights. And we appreciate that because being new and being in our community and being a new business, it's always nice to get the word out. So that's what we're going to do is help our community partner, Mr. Jimmy J. I'd like to start out the show by saying it's so important that we all read, not just read words, but content, context, exactly understand what you read. And then the softer side of that is I love ice cream. And everybody who knows me knows sometimes you can read my Facebook and at 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm sitting there in the middle of my bed with ice cream because I truly love ice cream. That's the one thing about these guys. They didn't bring me any ice cream. They're going to have an ice cream sundae, and it's to benefit Spread the Word Nevada. We're going to talk a little bit more about Spread the Word, but let's talk about the event. Your event is actually scheduled for September the 28th. And I'd like to introduce Lisa. And Lisa, well, I'm going to try this last name. Hobby Horse? Hobby Horse. Hobby Horse. Like Hobby Horse. Well, well, you know, if you have said that in the first place, I would have remembered that. People don't do that anymore, though. Everybody plays electronic games, so no one knows what a Hobby Horse is anyway. Lisa, thank you so much for being here. And Lisa's actually the Executive Director for Spread the Word Nevada. So we're going to talk to you in just a little bit. Let me get some information from Jenna Bell. That's an easy one. That's an easy easy one. one. Jenna Bell is the Lifestyle Director for the Providence Master Homeowners Association. That is correct. Providence HOA and Providence Master Plan Community. You're actually one of the sponsors. That is correct. Yep, this, this is event. the fifth year that we, we will be hosting the event, okay. um, which is the Sunny 106.5 mm-hmm. Ice Cream Sunday event. It's actually the 13th year that the event has been going on within the community, and okay. as I said, the fifth in Providence. Right. And it is a fantastic, family friendly yes. event. Free ice cream. Free ice cream. How can you go wrong? <laughs> you don't just have free ice cream at the event. There's a lot of really great uh, children's activities mm-hmm. and you know family friendly activities. Even right. if you don't have a little one, you still can come out. We right. have um, a petting zoo, and I know my son had a petting zoo for his uh, birthday one year, uh-huh. and the adults loved it more than the children did. Absolutely. So, you know, for sure. Because you know what? In this day and age, as I forestated, we're so electronic. So to go to an event. Where there's actually animals, animals, there's actually, and you can touch you can them. Touch yeah, them, you know, you don't have to drive all the way to Red Rock right. to the petting zoo to see that. But it's so it's so much fun to just interact yes. and have loads of people around who are not only enjoying ice cream but each other's company, networking, find out a little more about what you do, what you do, and the family. The family. I mean, that's really what we like to do at Providence when we host any event. This, this is obviously the sweetest event because we have so much ice cream that we hand out. But um, but it's really creating that neighborhood feel and me talking about how everything is so electronic. This, these types of events and this event in particular really does bring you back almost to another place and mm-hmm. another time. And right. that's really the Providence community, that is our goal. Is See, what have, would be perfect you if you have it in a little house with a white picket You know, fence. it's real close. You know? <laughs> it's really, really close. Where the event is actually held is a place called the Promenade, and okay. it's the centerpiece of the community, and the only way to get to it is to walk into it. It's not like you park in a big parking lot, right. and that's what it is, okay. where, where a lot of events are like that. This, you walk up in tree-lined promenade with little See? grassy areas. It's very nice. Very, very beautiful. So event. Good. Beautiful. Uh, I know. We're have. getting so happy about the event, but the actual purpose of the event is to help our community. Absolutely. And help our community and our kids to begin to physically pick up a book. I mean, when you brought your display, which is beautiful, by the way, I, I love all of these books. What was the first thing I said when you brought out Dr. Seuss? I said, this is my favorite. <laughs> people, you know, our young people don't even know about these. Like the cat in the hat and green eggs and ham and, you know, all of those good things. So to see that, and, and that is where you come in. Yeah, first spread the word spread Nevada, the word in. Nevada comes right. in. Now, you were established many years ago because there was uh, the need within our community, specifically the lower economic community, for kids to have books. 
physical books. Yeah. And the need is still exists today. So we started about 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. We adopt low-income schools, and we give books out to the children to take home to build their own home library. Mm -hmm. So the more books we can get into those homes, research says those kids will be reading and they'll have a better shot at better education. Okay, now let's marry the two. See, I'm that I'm that puzzle piece thing. You have your puzzle piece of the ice cream social, your puzzle piece of spread the word Nevada. How are we doing this? So basically we are collecting uh, books at, we actually with Providence, we have a very long standing yes, um, partnership with Spread the Word Nevada. So every event that we host at Providence, we collect books on behalf of Spread the Word. Mm -hmm. This this event, uh, we collect, we'll have locations within the event, throughout the event to collect books, okay. as well as Providence uh, Master Plan Community and HOA are uh, donating cases and cases and cases of water for sale, and all the proceeds go directly to Spread, spread the, word the Word Nevada. Nevada. So we're encouraging anyone who comes to attend the event to bring a new or gently used book so that we can donate it to spread the word. And if not, if you don't feel like bringing a book because maybe you you're coming. You can make a donation. You can make a donation. You can buy water and that money goes directly. When we don't take anything off the top, it goes directly to spread the word. You know, and I've had people say, you know, when you eat ice cream, you have to have water. Right. There's something about ice cream and water. Not me personally, but <laughs> but I, I just want more ice cream. But um, that is an excellent, excellent. And of course, you can, you can always make just a donation. Correct. You didn't bring a book. You don't want water. You're lactose intolerant. I mean, make come, enjoy, make a donation. Absolutely. What are some of the other things that Spread the Word Nevada are doing within our community? Oh, well, we not only do we give the books to the children, but we also have a mentor program. So we're always looking for people who want to partner up with a struggling reader in a location, a school near you that we serve. And we would love that. Um, that's an opportunity for everybody to get involved. And they read once a week. And when child. you say... A struggling reader. Mm -hmm. You're not necessarily talking about the person who doesn't know and the this that. No. You're talking about the person who not reads the words but reads the words right. and understands what they have read. Right. And we're talking really second, third graders is who we're targeting. You know, we need these kids reading by third grade or they can be lost down the road. That's the age. Sure. And sure. so that's the kids who already know the phonics, but just haven't had that time to sit down and read out loud and have, you know, the interaction at home maybe that they need to just continue to practice, practice, practice. Right. When they have somebody who comes to the school and sits with them and cares enough to show up every week, you see a tremendous growth. What do you need from our community for your organization? Well, we need books. If you have books that your children have outgrown, we'd love to take them and put them into a home that needs them. And we need mentors. Those are the two things that we need the most. Okay. We've been talking to Lisa and Jenna, Spread the Word Nevada, and Providence Master Homeowners Association. We'd like to thank Sunny 106.5, as well as Centennial Toyota. We did not mention them as and one of your sponsors. That is one of our sponsors, as well as Meadow Gold, That's because right. they're the ones Meadow here. Gold without, without, without the ice without cream. Without Meadow Gold, we wouldn't have yes. the ice cream. What's wrong so, with us? Huh? So they are, they're, they're an integral part of the ice cream <laughs> Sunday. Like the on Sunday. <laughs> How about the biggest part? The yeah. biggest part. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, I, I just can't make all the ice cream. Wait, I have a sure? little ice cream maker. You're sure you have, can't make it? I know, I know. Okay. I try. I'm we, we could try. Yeah, we could try. Okay. We do ice cream eating contests too there, so I'm just oh, saying. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no ice cream saying. eating contests. <laughs> ice cream Sunday that is going to be on September the 28th and is, is to benefit Spread the Word Nevada. And it's going to be at Providence Master Homeowners Association in the complex there. A wonderful, wonderful facility. Take the whole family out. Go as an individual. Give back to our community. If you don't like ice cream, buy some water. Don't want to buy some water? Make a donation. All in all, it's about the books. It's about reading. It's about giving back to our community and making sure that the kids who do not have books within their home, they can start their library. For more information, you can give them a call at 702-216-2020. That's 702-216-2020. Or go to their website, spreadthewordnevada.org. Very easy. It's on the website. talks all about you. And I am so happy that you joined us. Save the date, Thursday, September 25th at 11 a.m. Palm Mortuary and Cemetery and the Garden of Dreams Committee will be honoring the legacy of civil rights leader Jimmy Gay, recognizing his efforts in fighting racial discrimination 
in Las Vegas. That's Palm Downtown, 1325 North Main Street, Thursday, September 25th, 11 a.m. Support the Nevada Childhood Cancer Foundation. Participate in the Danny Gans Memorial Champions Run for Life, hosted by Donnie Osmond, Saturday, October 18th, at Town Square, which is located at 6605 Las Vegas Boulevard South. Call the Nevada Childhood Cancer Foundation at 702-735-8434 for more information. And welcome back. A walk for empowerment. Empowerment of everybody. Inclusive of everyone in our community. Coming together. And we're going to talk a little bit about why it's so important that all of the people in our community work together. I guess love would be a hard word to say for everybody, but at least like each other. True. Respect. True. Now, that's the biggest word. Most definitely. Arnold Bell, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank sir. you so Thank much you. for being here. We appreciate you. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for sending me the information. A walk for empowerment, and I love this, is to create events that promote community engagement right. that will inspire underrepresented Americans mm -hmm. about the importance of self empowerment. Right. And I right. think self empowerment is something that we all want to share with everyone. But you tell me what it means, especially for your walk. To be honest with you, it's about making the right decisions. I think that in order to empower yourself, you have to believe in yourself. And once you believe in yourself, collectively come together as a community and make the community even stronger. Mm -hmm. So in doing so, regardless of your cultural background or your religious background or your political affiliation, we all can empower ourselves by unifying what we need to do to overcome any obstacles set before our community. And that, that the one thing, the other thing you said, which I wanted to discuss, we believe in self-determination yes, yes. that promotes individual and community-based action right. to support economic, mm -hmm. political, mm -hmm. and social justice for all. Right, Expound right. upon that for me. Well, when you look at it, right, that the foundation of any community starts with a business, and you look at a lot of places throughout the West Las Vegas or throughout Las Vegas as a whole, there's really not that many businesses there. So being able to invest your dollars into businesses, no matter if it's Seven Seas, no matter if it's Mario's, or whatever given location is mm -hmm. on the west side, it's imperative that you understand that your economic base need to be there. Mm -hmm. And once you establish your economic base, you can go into the political arena. The political arena making investments with political uh, entities, no matter if it's Republican or Democrat. You can make a wise investment, a decision on who, what political party you're supporting. And in doing so, you become more engaged by having the politicians truly represent your community that you're a part of. And how do we do that? Well, how we, do you get to your politicians mm -hmm. and make sure that they are representing the whole? They're representing what is needed, what is everything within our community. First and foremost, we hold them accountable. I mean, I, I know from historical perspective that a lot of times a politician would give you so many chosen words, and once he or she is elected into office, <laughs> they're not no longer around. Right. So I think that if that individual does not hold accountable to what he or she promised you prior mm -hmm. to that, then as we elect them in, we can elect them out as well. But I think it's very imperative, imperative I should say, that the politicians also, too, engage with the community. So I invite any politicians that represent the urban community or the community at large right. to come out and be part of this here and be engaged with those citizens who are definitely concerned about the progress of their community. And I think that's what you meant when you said to galvanize organizations, right. constituents, mm -hmm. and contemporaries who support the plight of disenfranchised citizens. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of times when you are disenfranchised, it's sort of hard to believe in the system because the system is really not there for you. So by you believing in yourself and you're engaging with the community figures at large, politicians, even your churches. Right. I think there are a lot of churches in the West Side that can come out and support this endeavor. I think it goes beyond just the spiritual components of being able to say, I do believe. It also goes beyond the West Las Vegas oh, area. Oh yeah, def most definitely. And the reason yeah. why I was focused on the West Side of Las Vegas because our walk is going to be there. Right. Our walk is going to be from KCP to actually to and Pearson. And let's talk about that right. because it's actually a 2.5 mile walk. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, there's some of us who can't walk 2.5 miles for various health reasons right, or what right. have you. And those people, you want them to meet you at the Pearson yes, Center. Yes, yes. About 10 o'clock. 
Those okay. individuals who are unable to walk because of health or whatever given reason, they can meet us at the Prison Community Center. We have a nice program. We are taking time to actually acknowledge Mr. Joe Neal for his achievements, his lifetime right. achievements. Mm -hmm. We also going to take it upon ourselves to acknowledge Dr. Paul Meacham for his educational achievements. Oh my gosh, yes. So we're going to have a nice program and we're in the process of finalizing everything and those that are able to walk. Please meet there. Uh, meet us, I should say, at KCP parking lot right. at three thirty West Washington. And that's going to be at eight. At registration is at eight. Yes, ma'am. And you want the walk to begin at nine. Yes, nine o'clock. September twenty seventh. There mm -hmm. very possibly could be a weather condition. What are you yeah. going to do? And if it's doing because of rain or whatever given situation may be, we're going to have the actual event at person at 10 o'clock. Okay. So we have an alternative plan just in case something like that happened. But with the man up above and things going according to plan, I think we're going to have a good walk. Now, your mission statement is to inspire the disenfranchised citizens about the importance right. of self-empowerment. Right, And right. will that be a part of your program at the Pearson Center. Yes, yes, because empowerment is really about believing in yourself and no matter what some organization may be or if it's the Urban League or if it's the Nevada Partners, they only can do so much. So mm -hmm. the responsibility really is on the individual to further advance their career if it's professionally trying to become a doctor or a teacher or a lawyer or a dancer. So empowerment really means about getting the right amount of literature, understanding what you need to do to be successful and let the journey begin with you taking the first brave steps. Okay. A walk for empowerment. One people, one plight, one purpose. An event that embodies the importance of self-empowerment yes. in urban America. We're doing it right here in Southern Nevada. It's going to be on September the 27th. Registration is at 8. The walk will begin at 9, and that is at KCEP, which is 330 West Washington. The walk will then go up to the Pearson Center. And at that point, there will be a program to talk about empowerment, to talk about being a part of and holding your political people, holding them to be responsible, yeah, holding them to listen, right. holding them to, to recognize who they represent. Right. And just to interject something right quick as well, um, I definitely want to thank Councilman Barlow for Absolutely. being part of the sponsors, mm -hmm. as well as Commissioner um, Weekly, Weekly as well. Mm -hmm. And KCP Radio is doing a fabulous job in helping us promote this to the general community. And let's not forget in conjunction with the Frederick Douglass Lecture Series. Yes, yes. And we'll talk more about that later. I'll have you come back and we'll talk about no that. No problem. Okay? Thank you so a much, A Walk Jared. for Empowerment. It's going to be September the 27th. Registration at 8. The walk begins at 9 at KCEP. For more information, go on their website, walkforempowerment.com or simply give them a call at 702-480-1500. Thank you so much, Arnold, for Thank joining you so much, us. Jane. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank We're going to take a little break. We'll be right back. The Las Vegas Urban League is celebrating a decade of commitment to our community. Saturday, October 11th at Caesars Palace in Forum 12 Ballroom, 6 p.m. President's Reception, 7 p.m. Program and Entertainment. Call 702-636-3949 for more information. The Lillian McMorris Show is produced by Tego & Associates Productions. Multi-camera shoots either in our studio or on location. That's Tego & Associates Productions. Give us a call at 702-509-509. 7728. Grab the Lillian McMorris Show app, which will give you access to the current show, links to past segments, add your event to my community calendar. And welcome back. We thank you so much for still being with us. I'm Lillian McMorris, and we just like to give you loads of information as to what's going on in our community. Our next event is going to happen at the Smith Center, and it's slated for October the 3rd. I'd like to introduce Sandy Matthews. Welcome, Sandy. Thank you, Lillian. Thank How are you, you doing? so much for being here. You know, and I thank you for sending me the information. Thank you for having me. I Lillian. know you're a dancer. Yes, you have I a am. fabulous history, <laughs> and we can get into that just a little bit. But right now, let's talk a little bit about the Las Vegas Contemporary Dance Theater. What you're doing over there? The Las Vegas Contemporary Dance Theater is Las Vegas's 
professional contemporary dance group. Mm -hmm. I came to Las Vegas um, at the end of 2007, and as a dancer, I was looking for the dancers. Mm -hmm. And I found this company. Its founding artistic director, Bernard Gaddis, right. is currently the guiding force. Mm -hmm. The company was begun by Bernard, who is a former principal dancer with the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. Correct and Charmaine Hunter, mm -hmm. who was a principal dancer with the Arthur Mitchell's Dance uh, Theater of Harlem. Mm -hmm. You may remember Charmaine if you ever saw, saw Dance Theater of Harlem as the Firebird. The Firebird, yes. Yes, yes indeed. Yes. And although we talk about them, let's talk a little bit about your background, because you have a wonderful professional background that you bring to Las Vegas Contemporary Dance Theater. I began dancing when I was eight. Um, my my cousins, my teenage cousins, had to babysit me until um, my mother came home at night. So I was always hanging with the big kids. Okay. And my cousin Rose taught me to cha cha first by literally picking up my ankles and my and moving my feet <laughs> like that. My dad danced. Okay. There was always music and dancing and laughter at my house. Right. As so the, you were brought up in that atmosphere. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. As the barber. They only worked a half day in Cleveland, mm -hmm. so on Wednesday afternoons while he was cooking dinner, he danced me and all of my little eight-year-old girlfriends around the dining Aww, room. Oh, how then adorable. I, <laughs> I know it was very hey, cute. I can just see that. Just dance. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> then um, I heard drums at right. 13, mm -hmm. and I grew up in a theater at Caramu House in Cleveland okay. doing uh, musical theater all throughout my teens mm -hmm. and dancing to African drums. So, you know, you bringing this information not only shows your dedication, but your your ability, your respect for theater to preserving generations of what seems to have been, it's getting lost. It is getting it lost. It is getting lost. Um, I, I love legitimate theater, too, mm -hmm. um, meaning drama. Right. Okay. As well as musical theater. Right. But in my teens, I did musical theater and probably always as a principal dancer. And Caramel House was an amazing center in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, the, a, a large part of the Negro Ensemble in New York came directly from Caramel House. Now, since we're talking about theater, mm -hmm. Alice Down the Rabbit Hole. Yes. <laughs> it makes you laugh just to say the name. Bernard has this extremely creative mind, mm -hmm. and although it sounds like children's theater, this is going to be, definitely is mature theater, okay? okay? Um, the theme of Alice and the wonder of dance and imagination all combine right. in Bernard's fertile mind to come up with Alice Down the Rabbit Hole. It will be performed on my birthday, at the Smith Center. That's your birthday, October 3rd? October 3rd. Well, an is early over. happy birthday, and I'll Thank make you. sure I'm there, and I do hope that they honor you in that respect. <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> yes, but, but at the Smith Center, and that, that in itself gives you credence, gives you respectability, gives you confidence. This because is a that world stage. This is a world class dance theater. It is. You have to understand that since the Smith Center opened, mm -hmm. the Las Vegas Contemporary Dance Theater has drawn the largest audiences mm -hmm. of any dance company, including the Nationals, mm -hmm. that has attended at the Smith Center. But I love what the way being the, the, the largest contemporary and being what you are, you draw youth in. You take the time for the young people in our community. You teach them. You, you look at what talents they have. Enhance upon them. There's a young man uh, dancing with the company now who started at the West Las Vegas Library Theater at his, as his dance career there. Mm -hmm. And over the years, as Bernard has given back to the community, because dance comes from the community mm -hmm. and must be given back, Correct. it's a quote, through Bernard of Alvin Ailey's, okay? Okay. Um, he picked up a young man, Avery Walker, and he has mentored him along. And I've just watched Avery grow and blossom. Now, is he a part of Alice Down the Rabbit Hole? Definitely. He's well, a principal we'll be, with the company he's now. He's a principal. He's we'll a principal be looking now. for him. I want, to, I want to say this because I love this part 
we, we don't want anyone to miss this. This is an absolutely wonderful uh, a dance theater at the Smith Center, October the 3rd. And what time is the performance? The performance is at 7.30. At 7.30, but they can also go to LV Contemporary Dance Theater Dot com. That's correct. Okay. Or they can go to the Smith Center's website it's, it's, yeah, and I purchase saw it on tickets. There too, yeah. Yes. Uh, it's also on the Smith Center's website. For more information about the Las Vegas Contemporary Dance Theater and about this wonderful performance, 702-690-8925. And I want to throw this in. Dance is a spoken word of movement. It's part of the culture of almost every civilization yes, in the world. It is. Through the sharing of dance, many rituals envision sharing Las Vegas with the world and bringing back a little of the world in return. So don't miss this performance. Alice Down the Rabbit Hole, October the 3rd at... The Smith Center the Smith for Center the Performing Arts. For the Performing Arts, and you can go to either website and get more information. We're so happy to have you, Sandy. I'm We're happy to have to you in our here. community. We're happy to have you as part of the Las Vegas Contemporary Dance Theater. And please give my regards to all, and I will be there to cheer you on. And hopefully we'll have all of our listeners and all of our watchers also to cheer on the Las Vegas Contemporary Dance Theater and bring some more numbers to the Smith Center so you That's can keep right. going back. We want to sell out this That's time. right. <laughs> sell it out. That's what it's all about. I'm Lillian McMorris, and we want to thank not only City Lights for letting us tape here, but we'd like to thank Cox Communications for allowing the Lillian McMorris Show to be aired each and every day almost. I mean, they're so good at getting out the word into our community as to what we are doing. So we want to thank them as well as all of our other sponsors, which is listed on our website, LillianMcMorrisShow.com. So keep listening for us. Keep watching us. Look on the Internet. Watch Cox 96. We'll talk to you next time. The Lillian McMorris Show is produced by Tigo & Associates Productions. Multi-camera shoots either in our studio or on location. That's Tigo & Associates Productions. Give us a call at 702-509-7728. The Lillian McMorris Show is brought to you in part by Louisiana Gumbo and More. Located on West Charleston. The best gumbo fried catfish, salads, and don't forget the po' boys. That's Louisiana Gumbo and more on West Charleston. Grab the Lillian McMorris Show app, which will give you access to the current show, links to past segments, add your event to my community calendar.